So which backyard would you choose? If you're like me, getting a credit card for Anarchy Online was a mission itself. This was the first game which required a monthly income to play. So what did you get for your monthly sub? An adventure which lasted over 22 years by walking through one of three doors. Once the game was installed, an additional unspecified time was needed for the game to patch further. The anxiety of a child waiting for this download to be finished, only left with a few precious hours to play, and finally greeted with a character creation screen. An adventure was now in reaching distance of a few clicks of a mouse and a quickly hashed out character name. The excitement was overwhelming. I've never had the opportunity to create, in this detail, a character of my own. We were all ready to enter Ruby Car and were greeted with the most exciting entrance to any MMO. PC roared to life and before you could see any visuals all you could hear was gun blasts and shrieks of dying monsters vanquished by other players. The logo would hold for so many long seconds that you were teased, held back, starved for being allowed to join in the fun. The first backyard experience I had was Borealis. It was a neutral playground. Taking a walk around the backyard would bring back a lot of memories. The monsters, the guards. It felt like Moss Eisley Spaceball in Star Wars, a junk town with robots. What made this area fascinating was the simplicity of it all. You can hear the faint dronings of machinery in the background as you walk around this neglected area. But what made it so charming was as you went through a small tunnel, you're welcomed into a beautiful landscape. A landscape which is full of luscious green trees, foliage, and amongst it, not only sweet little creatures, but horrible mutants that had to be destroyed for the smallest loot that would help you further on. The clan territories had a very different setup. It felt like a Middle Eastern, almost Aladdin-style atmosphere, where the midnight sky and the palm trees complemented each other to add to this mystical world. The brick infrastructure looked tired and weathered under the hot desert sun, but the foliage gave it a glimpse of hope amongst the luscious grass and the waterfalls. There was something quite relaxing about the backyard in the clan territories. It was quieter. The enemies seemed a little less hostile. The mixture between desert and tropics made it almost romantic. Entering into the Omnitech backyards, you get to see huge, gothic-like high-rise apartments, almost something like from Batman. Omnitech is a hyper-corporation with affiliates all over the galaxy, it has a large presence on Ruby Car, considering it mines Notum. It strives for profit and lets nothing stand in its way. It seems to be solely focused on material benefits. Being an Omnitech employee makes you feel you're bound to the system, bound to the game, the conquest for money and prosperity, which is why you start in such a gloomy swamp-like backyard and then walk out to the high-rises shows the difference, the confliction between both poor and wealthy. Starting in the Omnitech always gives me the sense of I'm being looked after. I didn't feel like I was an outcast, not struggling. 
I felt like the whole game ahead of me was on my side. Little did I realise, it made no difference. War played out as it should, and other factions treated you as their enemy. Exiting from the Hollow World, and being serenaded by, I think, one of the best soundtracks. When Shadowlands was released in 2003, it came with two brand new classes and its very own backyard. Shadowlands was a world of unknown technology, corrupt creatures and destructive conflict. A clashed mix of both ancient sci-fi and fantasy. If you made the unpopular choice of starting in the backyard, you were greeted with a dream world, a nightmare genre mix, and a total change of what players of Rubicar were used to. The first glimpse of this world through the doors of the backyard were one of towering trees, bright white unicorns and rock monsters with the edge leading off into nowhere. The colours were a mix of blues and greens which came off as dreamlike, although simplistic in nature some of us can't quite shake our first experience of this place and the adventure which thus follows. Around the time of the Alien Expansion Pack, we were treated to a new backyard which looked very promising. Simplicity had returned and the new wave of players were greeted with a beautiful remote island and sandy beaches and scurrying vermin, each dropping new loot and exciting loots. Anarchy was back on track and the familiar smell of the old anarchy appeared to have returned. We were carefully introduced to the new world of the alien invasion and to ignore the headache of the shadow worlds. It was fun and vibrant, players returned to the game in their droves and the first glimpse of alien weapons was an injection of many more years of fun. Like a punctured lung, Funcom was thrashing around and trying to hold on to players and reinvent Ruby Car without putting careful attention in the community support or good intentions from the player base. This reflected in the decisions, which was more about dragging players through the game as fast as possible. So goodbye was the quaint charm of the beaches and the backyard and say hello to this ex-Soviet industrial themed punishment, which was a read. Gone are the luscious landscapes and towering trees, wildlife and intriguing nature which, which pushed us to explore the unknown. With our hands held tight, we were guided through simple stepping stones and collection quests to reward us with the sound of DING and the dried out dopamine hit of progression. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. On the plus side, players were now taken on a vertical style airport elevator towards three doors, none of which really mattered anymore as players had already made up their minds about their character's destination. Pasting of wallpaper or more wallpaper makes your walls smaller, but the outside of the house still stands. There is hope for Anarchy Online to return to its glory, but it won't be in the hands of Funcom. A small community of players are setting up groups on Facebook and Twitch channels to get players back into the game on a more free-to-play model. Iron Man challenges and social meetups are gaining more strength. As I'm typing this, I can see players streaming Anarchy Online to an ever-growing audience. So which backyard would you choose? 